Yeah, I agree. You know, I agree with what you're saying. Um, it's it's something else. Um, let's go over to the Lee Wood card. I think Maurice Lara, Mauricio Lara becomes a guy in this division. Um, I still don't think he's in the Rabisi Ramirez tier of the best guy in the division. I know I got a lot of crap on Twitter because I said I think Rabisi is the best featherweight. I don't need him to win a belt for me to think that that's what it is. But what did you think of Mauricio Lara knocking out Lee Wood? Kind of shocked me. Um, what do you think? I didn't. It didn't shock me the way that 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 was a going to be a gunslinger fight. That was going to be a flip a coin fight for me at least. Um, I, at least on merit, you know, beating Warrington twice and being very much on the the upset side of that. Beating Lee Wood now, who we've been saying is one of the more underappreciated fighters in boxing. On merit, it's hard to argue anybody above him right now at featherweight. I mean, I think that Robisi is much more talented and would beat him. But I think if you're stacking up people's resumes, I feel like he's the number one guy at this weight right now. So I'm uh, Mauricio Lara based on accomplishments. Yes. But I'm just saying, for me personally, I got Robisi there number one. No, Robisi is by far the most talented. I agree with you there. I just think that when you look at the fact, look, look at who this guy's beating in the context he's beating them. Yeah, he's, he's going to he the B side, and he has the best wins in it of anybody in the division. Is he like a baby Mayorga spitting on Josh Warrington after the fight, saying he wants to retire him? I mean, is he the the UK boogeyman now? He is a little bit, bro. And I think uh, you know, I, I, I'm actually curious to to hear your take on the stoppage because I feel I, like I, his reputation had something to do with the stoppage. That's what I think too was, and I went, I watched it with my girlfriend after the fact I was out doing something. And when he, I thought he got laid out because I watched the highlight video. So I saw him get dropped and I'm like, Oh God, I don't want to watch knockdown. this hard knockdown. He hard knockdown, but the way he got up and he's in there with a violent puncher. He's in there with a violent puncher. So he's in there with a violent puncher like Lara. And when you're in there with a guy like that, I felt like if you go back in and the coach doesn't throw the towel, there's a chance he really tries to lay you out and you get permanent damage. So to me personally, I thought Ben Davison did a fantastic job because he made sure his guy didn't get dramatically injured. And I think that oftentimes when coaches make good decisions for their fighters, they get punished and ridiculed by the media for looking out for their fighter's best interest. I think I'm, I'm very much conflicted on it because I agree with everything that you're saying. Where I'm conflicted is the fact that there was 10 seconds left, left in the round and the history of Lee Wood's career and the kind of character he's shown. Obviously, he got dropped multiple times by Conlon, came back, knocked him out in the 12th round. So there's a level of resilience to him that not every fighter has. But... I guess even be, because that's the case, right? Ben obviously saw something we didn't see. And the fact, I, I, I can't remember if Lee's legs ever went out that bad against Conlon either. I don't think they did. Um, so he, I, I think Ben. He was, he was hurt, bro, because when he got well, up, like to me. Do you think he could have survived the 10, the 10 seconds? I mean, I think possibly, but I don't think that. It was about that, if that makes sense. I think that the fight, if, okay, he survives that. But see, here's the other thing, right? When did Lara brutally knock out Emilio Sanchez? He hurt him right at the bell. This guy, Lara, is one of the most dangerous guys in the world at when the bell rings, he's going to get another punch off. He's good at punching at the end of rounds when you let your guard down. I think that the corner would have stopped it in the corner. So I think this was just one of those things. Why even risk him taking a big shot? We don't want to send him out for the next round. It's over. I think that's the what they were saying by it. Yeah. I mean, that's one where, you know, looking at it, maybe even I feel like I would have done something different, but that's a judgment call that, you know, I, I, he made that call and, I, and it's, it would be tough for me to tell, tell him he's wrong. It protects the fighter, too, to a degree, too. 
it leaves a shadow of doubt to the fans and puts the blame on the coach. So the fighter actually, like maybe Lee Wood loses a little luster, but really to some fans, it's like, oh, he probably could have done better. The coach was the one that didn't give him the opportunity. I mean, these two are going to run it back. For sure, I hope. But I mean, I think it's also a way of protecting your fighter, you know? And and I think that Lee Wood at 34 and he's had some physical fights, you know, they probably want to get as much out of him as they can and they don't want to leave it all in the ring in this one fight. And Laura is a guy that I think that you can lose a lot of your career fighting a guy like this. This is this is one of the most violent punchers we've seen in the lower weights in some time. Yeah, and I think even aside from that, there is a level of um he has that thing that, but he has it even more so, but he has that thing that Azad has where, you know, you can't ever count him out. It doesn't matter the momentum of the fight or the way the fight is going. Cause when he dropped Lee Wood, Lee was having, you know, some of his better moments of the fight. Yeah. I mean, I just, I'm a fan of the way Lee Wood fights because I think that he's one of the more resilient fighters, like guys that have two losses typically view themselves as an opponent and he rallied back and got a world title and got an up come from behind win which lara also has but lara not just has that he has like this boogeyman puncher vibe to him so on top of that on top of the resiliency he's hitting guys in a manner i haven't seen a featherweight hit people i don't know maybe oscar valdez is the last guy that was punching people like this but you don't he's punching featherweights the way middleweights punch guys he's got that spooky power like, I, I truly believe he's a guy that guys kind of question how hard he hits and what they're in for when they go in the ring with him because he does have this era about him. And I think that the promotion for this fight kind of spoke to that. The promotion said, dance with the devil. I mean, I think that people really look at this, not say he's the devil, but they look at it as like, what am I getting myself into? This guy is a really reckless power guy. Yeah, and I mean, you go down the, the the rankings of the division, him and Brandon Figueroa is a tremendous fight. I mean, that's just a fucking phenomenal matchup. Uh, you know, him and, and Luis Alberto Lopez is a fucking fantastic fight. That's a fight that needs to happen. That's a fantastic fight. You know, a, a rematch with Lee Wood is a fantastic fight. A fight with Robesi is a great fight. You know, there's a lot of great matchups that Lara can be involved in. And outside of Robesi, I think they're all 50-50. And even with Robesi, you know, we haven't seen how he handles somebody like that yet. Very, very true. It's very true. Undercard. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you want to continue to see videos like this one, go to OnlyFans.com slash ITR Boxing. We have a ton of content there, and it's really, really easy to see weekly, never-before-seen videos, some editorials in video form. We have a ton of content that's exclusively over there. And two times a month, we're bringing you full-length documentaries or quarter-length, about 15 to 20-minute documentaries for our OnlyFans. So really go check it out and see what all the buzz is about.